Hey everybody, welcome back to Business and Technology in Tennessee. This is a podcast by Infosystems. I'm Josh Davis, the Marketing Director at Infosystems, and with me today is Alexis Willis. You are the Director of Small Business and Entrepreneurship mm-hmm. for the Chattanooga Area Chamber of Commerce. Yes. Did I get Long that right? title. Yes, okay. yes, you got you nailed it. So uh, as part of your role, you're directly involved at the business incubator. Correct. Which is a facility, mm-hmm. but also programs that go along with the facility. Correct. And mm-hmm. uh, a lot of that has to do with helping small businesses and entrepreneurs get off the ground and, and hopefully grow into a successful company. So. I'd like to talk about that yeah. some today. I'd like to talk a little about uh, some of your background mm-hmm. today and uh, what, what you bring to the table at the Chamber of Commerce through your previous experiences and skills. And so hopefully this will be a good conversation for yeah. people to get to know who is Alexis Willis and, and what's going on over there in that building at the corner of Manufacturers in Cherokee. Yeah. So. Uh, to get To get started, let's talk a little about your background. Are you okay. from Chattanooga? Um, not originally. I'm from New Orleans originally. Okay. Uh, I moved here in 97, so Chattanooga's home. You've been around so been for there. a while. Been around for a while. Yeah. Um, my dad is in automotive manufacturing, and okay. so at the time he was in commercial and residential carpet, decided to yank us out of New Orleans and get us closer to the carpet capital of the world, which we know is Dalton, Georgia. <laughs> yeah. So it was a bit of a culture shock to go from New Orleans to, we actually weren't in Dalton, we were outside of Dalton in Chatsworth, Georgia. Oh, yeah. So it was even more of, you know, I mean, we were miserable the first few months we we moved here. Um, But he has since transitioned out of residential carpet and now solely does uh, automotive flooring. He works at Nissan, Toyota, um, Honda. So uh, a lot of those vehicles have my family's company in it, which is really cool. So my background is, 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 I say my background, my family's family company's background is in manufacturing. Um, so I kind of get a little geeked out over oh, yeah. manufacturing I, processes. A company I worked for a few years back is really uh, heavily focused on textile manufacturing. And, yes. And until you like really start learning about any one particular industry or mm-hmm. something, mm-hmm. You, you don't realize all of the little intricacies and complicated things and processes. It's, it's totally amazing yeah. some of that stuff. It is. It's definitely, and when you... I mean, when I go into some of the facilities, even locally, like Roadtech, that starts with a sheet of metal and then builds these huge machines that are tearing up interstates, I mean, that's absolutely fascinating to (laughs) me and definitely energizes the work that I do at the incubator. Yeah, that's Mm -hmm. great. Mm -hmm. And so I I saw on your LinkedIn profile, you went to UTC. I did, yes. So uh, a mock. Yes, go mocks. Yeah, right on. I I went to UTC briefly, but finished college at MTSU. So I I sort of have a regional flavor when it comes to my college background. I I support the Blue Raiders and the mocks. Yeah, um, cool. So so I know I I probably started seeing you years ago Mm -hmm. at local entrepreneurship focused events like the the collab and some of the 48 hour launch things they were doing and various, you know, create here and all of the things that were going on down there on Main Street Mm -hmm. uh, when collab was kind of right there near the Bluegrass Grill and all that. So tell me a little about how you got to become involved in the entrepreneurial scene here in Chattanooga. I think a lot of it is inspired by my dad's story. I mean, I've never seen him punch a clock. So uh, growing up, it was always, you know, we were scurrying around his office. We were running around the, the plants. Um, and so we, I saw the highs and lows of entrepreneurship. Um, I, I dabbled in entrepreneurship myself, but I felt like my place was supporting people who may have been on the same journey as my dad. So mm. we definitely saw the highs, but there were times um, that I remember uh, coming home and all the furniture was being moved out of the house because dad had lost everything, you know, yes. and had to reset the whole family all over again. Mm-hmm. You know, that happened a couple times throughout my, you know, throughout my childhood. Now, my siblings didn't see that that whole journey. They most they, most of the time they were there for the highs, right? right? So eventually you learn from your mistakes and you become more and more successful. But I felt like that journey was something I wanted to be a part of for other people. 
Um, mm -hmm. You're right, I have been involved for a long time. I kind of was the girl that never went away. Started as an intern with uh, the collab almost a decade ago mm -hmm. and um, participated in their programs, launched Red Lipstick Experiment, Natural Beautiful Me as a platform. I uh, developed to um, empower women to embrace their natural beauty and value their identity. Mm -hmm. And so that has taken on different lives. It started with t-shirts and it was <laughs> events and now it's story share events that um, that bring women together to, to sort of share their testimonies. So um, you're right, I've, I've had my own wild ride, but <laughs> yeah. um, I think what, what I bring to the role is the fact that I'm a connector. So yeah. no, I haven't had a huge company that had a huge exit and raised a lot of capital, but I do know people who have. Right. You know, I mean, like my phone is my 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 contact list, I think, is is the value that I bring to the, to the table yeah. and also spotting opportunities for growth for other entrepreneurs. Like mm, maybe we should retool this or rethink that. And if I don't have the answer, then I definitely can connect them with someone who does. You know, and I, one thing that amazes me about Chattanooga is the network mm -hmm. of connectors. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a network of fantastic people here that play all types of different roles in the local business mm -hmm. scene, but there are also, you know, the people who are really those connectors who love listening to ideas yes. and and say, oh, well, you know, I know some, so-and-so would be perfect for that. Mm -hmm. Let's get you in touch with them. And, yes. you know, that, that's such a vital role, and I can definitely see how that plays into what you're doing now and oh, what yeah. you've done, you know, in past experiences with CoLab and some other places. So t tell me a little about the chamber and the programs that mm -hmm. they are running to support entrepreneurs and business startups. So they have their their regular like morning um, morning events, networking events, but they, the incubator program is unique is unique. So we are uh, a program housed in Hamilton County's building at the mm -hmm. corner of Manufacturers and, and Cherokee. And the program historically has been about three years. Um, we've now extended it to a fourth year, but what we provide is wraparound support and below market rate rent. Mm. So also um, we've been known as the place to go for cheap rent. And that's like nails on chalkboard for me because <laughs> What I bring to the table is not cheap, my team is not cheap, and the resources we have in the building are not cheap. Yeah. So um, so, it's, so I'm creating a bit of a shift. We've just, we're starting to wrap up strategic planning um, alongside the higher uh, strategic planning with Velocity 2040. Mm -hmm. um, that's economic development as a whole, and then my program was going through one as well. Um, but shifting it from a real estate play to a human play. We build CEOs at the incubator. And we do that with wraparound support. And we and as I um, research more programs, uh, boot camps, um, entrepreneurs that can come in as mentors, things like that, I think we're going to develop a really robust program over the next couple of years. Yeah, I think the mentorship piece is so vital to growing a company. You know, I think back to my childhood and my stepdad, who is really who I grew up with, my mm -hmm. mom and stepdad, and he was a business owner, an mm -hmm. entrepreneur. He started a company that uh, designed and manufactured coal mining equipment. Wow. And we grew up in a little tiny town in southwestern Virginia mm -hmm. that was extremely economically suppressed. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I come from a household that was extremely economically suppressed. Mm -hmm. And we, you know, we had nothing when I was growing up. And, uh, but over the course of decades, he grew a successful company that, mm -hmm. you know, as when he reached retirement age, he exited uh, very well off. Yeah. And, you know, just growing up, seeing his worth, work ethic and determination and just the grit that it takes to mm -hmm. make it, you, you know, to me, that that was what probably I absorbed more than anything yeah. from my childhood that plays a role in my professional life today. Yeah, but, exactly. And having him mm -hmm. still involved in my life to, you know, to talk to about whatever it may be professionally or, you know, life stuff as a mentor, mm -hmm. you know, is tremendous. And, you know, a lot of people don't have that. Uh, so, to gain access, especially for people who don't have it in their in their own bubble, in their own circles in life, to be able to enter into an environment mm -hmm. like the incubator mm -hmm. where they would be surrounded by uh, not only 
potential mentors, but like-minded peers who are also on the same journey mm -hmm, as them. And mm -hmm. you know, I just can't, to me, it's, that just seems like one of the most valuable things you could possibly plug into as an entrepreneur. I agree, and I'm, I'm not quite sure what's happening in other cities, but from what I heard, the accessibility in Chattanooga is unmatched anywhere else. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you can go into a coffee shop downtown and bump into the city attorney or even the mayor or, you know, or someone who's, who does have access to capital or who's mm -hmm. the CEO of a bank, um, doesn't always happen in other places, and I do believe that that the the combination of accessibility and the connectors is what makes our ecosystem work really well. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, tell me a little about the types of businesses that come in and out of the incubator. Are there any areas of focus? Are there anything where you know the incubator has proven? Like, oh yeah, if we get our hands on that type of company, we're yeah. going to take care of them. They're going to be wildly successful. What, Give yeah. me some feedback on that. Um, so we're, um, we still haven't found that company yet. <laughs> yeah. I don't think, but we, we, we believe in all the ones that, are, that come into our building. Um, we haven't been specific in saying we're going to target certain industries historically. Mm -hmm. we're, as we go through the strategic plan, I think we'll refine that and figure out who it is that we could nurture well in the building. But mm -hmm. right now we have both manufacturing and service businesses. So um, if you've had Hoff and Pepper, they make and bottle it in our, in our facility. Um, the Rustic House makes their candles in our facility. And then we have Branch Technology, who's building walls. Yeah. Um, but then we also have Gabby Blaze, who is a, a nominee for the Small Business Awards this year, who's a fantastic graphic designer. Mm. Um, we have Sabrina Moon, who does um, consulting when it comes to refining your processes on the manufacturing side. Uh, Dan Mailman has a, a cool technology where it, it enables you to type in foreign languages much, much easier. It hmm. streamlines that process. So we're all over the place, you yeah. know, and I, I like it like that. You know, we have a good mix. Um, it keeps the building exciting. Um, yeah. We, as they get to know each other, it's, it's really fun to see how they collaborate. Um, I mean, we have some really cool companies in there. Sierra Madre, they make fantastic outdoor equipment and Richard was uh, backed by Richard Branson, you know. Wow. Um, so we have some really cool, I mean, we're a gold mine at that corner. Yeah. Um, that's, I mean, really has been hidden in plain sight for quite some time. I remember driving by that building, you know, back in the 80s and early 90s and you know, just thinking it was the ugliest it's thing. It's just pretty and, crummy, huh? Yeah. yeah. Cr <laughs> what in the world is that? Yeah, and, yeah. You know, of course, most of downtown Chattanooga looked like that yeah. too. It was yeah. pretty crummy back back in those days, but mm -hmm, it's amazing mm -hmm. the the life that has been breathed into the city and, you know, taking old buildings like that and yeah. uh, bringing them to life. And, mm -hmm. the, you know, now how, how many companies are in the incubator? We have 54 companies in there right now. Wow. Mm hmm yeah. That's fantastic. And mm -hmm. I remember years back, it, it, it's probably been a while, but I remember hearing a statistic about the success rate of companies that graduate out of the incubator, and it was pretty mind-boggling. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so far, the data shows it's been over 90% success rate. Um, we're not telling that story enough, yeah. I think, of the companies that have come out of there. RMJ Tactical, they make tomahawks, if you've ever heard of them. They mm -hmm have a phenomenal story um, of how they got started. And again, back to my manufacturing geekiness. Um, <laughs> when I visited their facility, I thought it was fascinating that there's only two components of that that's done um, outside of the building. Most of it's done in-house and it's family owned. Yeah. Like each process, I mean, it's those kind of stories. We need to be like shouting from my rooftop that this is what it means to be a part of the incubator program. And also how we, um, economically how we're developing Hamilton County. Yeah. Yeah. You know, a couple of questions that come to mind for me when, as we're talking about the uh, entrepreneurship and the incubator. Chattanooga has come su become such a, a techno technology focused mm -hmm. town, you know, with it started with the gig kind mm -hmm. of, you know, EPB brought online the gigabit internet speed and really started all of the economic development in town kind of grabbed onto that and really mm -hmm. started reaching out and putting on events like the gig tank and all of the, you know, 
uh, I think that even, I don't know if it was CNE, the Chattanooga Neighborhood Enterprise, or mm -hmm. one of the organizations started a program for uh, technology-based people to move to town and okay. get really yeah. great incentives on mm -hmm. housing to try and boost up the number of uh, technologists in town. Mm -hmm. And you know, there's just been such a, a buy-in around technology uh, in Chattanooga. Is that something that the incubator really focuses on as well, or do you just take more of a holistic approach and it doesn't really matter? Yeah, we take more of a holistic approach. Um, we don't have very many companies who are taking advantage of the gig, but that doesn't mean that it won't change. Right. Um, technology right now for the building means um, what Branch is doing, 3D printing, or um, what Tony DeSanto is doing with one-off engineering where he's um, using technology to scan rock formations around the world, really, hmm. and then 3D printing them into molds and creating the formations for places like High Point or um, other climbing gyms around the country. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's super cool. <laughs> it's super cool. And Branch Technology, I remember reading the, the press that went out when they were kind of ramping up about, that's one of the largest 3D print mechanisms yes. in existence or in, in the southeast. I can't remember what the qualifier was, yeah. but it, I mean, that's pretty amazing to be it's in It's pretty fascinating. There. I mean, they bump up against like Oak Ridge, the, yeah. their facility. That's, that's the only ones that can really keep up with them. Um, and they're transitioning out this year to 40,000 square feet, which is great. We've been able to nurture them for all these years. I remember when Platt came into the collab and we were like, he wants to 3D print walls. Like we were not, <laughs> he, we, he, we were not buying into that initially. Yeah. Um, but then here he is and thank goodness he didn't listen. Yeah. Um, you know, he's doing really well. Yeah, that's, I mean, just another fantastic story from people locally who just had an idea. And you know, you're right when it comes to, um, and it's such a challenging thing when you think about people really trying to get uh, raise venture capital or mm -hmm. things like that and and if all you have is an idea mm -hmm. you can so easily get dissuaded or burned out oh, just yeah. trying to sell people on your idea before you've even been able to do anything it's true it's true and we hear a lot of ideas all the time and you know to be honest sometimes they're not very good but right. we have removed ourselves from being the people who say that's not a bad idea there are a lot of processes in place like co-starters mm -hmm. that is customer focused and if you go out there and you try and sell this idea and you don't have customers then you might have to refine the idea or yeah. start you know going a whole different direction um and so even though you know we may have raised an eyebrow with with a uh, plat who was bought here back then it was the gig tank event mm -hmm. um we may have raised an eyebrow like mm, we can't quite see it the fact that he saw it and still took advantage of the resources and we still showed up to support him i mean he's a fantastic example of how the ecosystem works yeah yeah i mean if you to me if you are able to take the people the idea people and really give them sound fundam fundamentals about business. Mm -hmm. This is what it takes to you know, get started up, operate on a budget, yeah. plan, mm -hmm. uh, hire and train people, mm -hmm. you know, all of the diff various things that go into uh, running a company or owning a company. You know, if you can really get idea people mm -hmm. to build a sound fundamental business sense, then mm -hmm. they're way more likely to be successful taking that idea to fruition. Yeah, if they're executors. Yeah. So we have some that kind of hover in the idea phase <laughs> yeah. and they stay in dreamland and they're like, oh, I have this idea, I have this idea. And it's like, oh, another one. I've even been guilty of that. Yeah. I mean, it's the follow through and the exec execution that sets these folks apart. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, flat executed. He, I mean, he was in his in his home kitchen. Yeah. And you, you know, you kind of see when you have an idea, you can see it so clearly in your own mind about, yeah. you know, how, how great it's going to be mm -hmm. and oh, this, mm -hmm. but yeah, until you yeah, have until some you people start. poke holes and, you know. Because how do you get there? Yeah, yeah, come down to earth a little bit. Okay, that's what it's going to take. Exactly. Uh, and sometimes that scares people off. Yeah. It's like, oh, all right. Well, yeah, in theory, it's a great idea, but I'm going to stick with my nine to five because it's yeah. a sure thing, you know. Um, so we see that, too. And then they circle back. 
Yeah, and you know, I think that's t not a terrible idea for people who have a career mm -hmm. to, you know, tinker with things on the side. I agree. And then if they can, you know, make get something to the point where it's feasible, then you move ahead with it. Exactly. I almost feel like you can't exist in our in our climate right now without having something on the side as sort of a backup that yeah. you do, um, you know, to generate income. So, you know, when it comes to entrepreneurship, Chattanooga has received a lot of acclaim mm -hmm. nationwide, especially in the last couple of years about, oh, yeah. you know, cost of living, fantastic uh, quality of life, mm -hmm. lots of natural resources, outdoor, it's a beautiful mm -hmm. city, you uh -huh. know, lots of access, like you said, connections to, you know, key players in the community are typically made pretty easily. And, uh, you know, yet it doesn't really seem to me like Chattanooga has changed all that much in the last eight or 10 years since, yeah. since, since we really, you know, started to get on the map as an entrepreneurial destination. You know, for a while there, it seemed like, oh man, this city could double in size in the next 10 years. We're going to be 500,000 before you know yeah. it. And, you know, we're going to be a suburb of Atlanta. And, yeah, you know, those yeah, things. Yeah. It hasn't really changed that much. No, um, no, I, I agree. It has changed since in 20 years since I've been here. Like, for example, walking on the Walnut Street Bridge, I don't even think I would have seen a dozen people 20 yeah. years ago on the bridge. Now you see dozens and dozens of people, and they're from all different backgrounds, um, which I think is exciting. Uh, I do believe there's an opportunity for um, more minority and women-led companies to yeah. sort of thrive and have access to. I'm not quite sure what the formula is. It's an active conversation in a lot of the circles I'm in, um, is how to support them well, get them access to capital. And what's, I mean, kind of what, what's the barrier there? We can't quite yeah. figure it, figure it out because yeah, the resources tough. are there. The resources are available to anyone. No one is discriminating about uh, who can get them. Right. But um, as much as we are, um, as much as they are accessible, somehow they're not being accessed by everyone. And I think yeah. we're still trying to figure that out. Yeah, you know, there, there's a lot of programs and opportunities and, you know, you could have 10 people, each one, you know, different race or uh, a different gender mm -hmm. or from a different background, socioeconomic background or native languages or whatever it may be, you know, you could have those 10 people and nobody who are running these programs are going to say, nope, right. we're not going to take you because of that. Right. Or we're going to take that person instead because mm -hmm. you're a little too different than what we normally, you know, yeah. that, that yeah. doesn't really exist now. There, there's, a, there's a lot of diversity and inclusion initiatives out there, but yet, you know, and we see it a lot in mm -hmm. IT and the technology yeah. Yeah. industry. And we, I'm on the Chattanooga um, Technology Council board. Okay. And we're, looking at, you know, doing diversity and uh, inclusion forums and programs and there's women in technology programming and, you know, it's just, it seems like such a challenge and, you know, it, you're right though, it's mm -hmm. like, what's the disconnect? How, yeah. do, how do you just get over that last hurdle? And yeah, I've thought of a couple of different things, like maybe it's taking um, some of these tech companies, like I've even thought about, you know, Branch, for example, um, to maybe going to a job fair at an HBCU, you know, and showing up in those spaces where they're looking for jobs, they're showing up with their resumes, they're showing up, mm -hmm. you know, hungry for an opportunity. Maybe that's what it takes. Because um, if you go down to Atlanta, uh, you could probably find diversity. And, you right. Know, you can probably build a diverse team in a matter of hours. Yeah, very true. Somehow in Chattanooga, we don't get, there's, there's something there. Um, but I think we're on out. the right track we with are. leaders in our community who aren't just going to accept that, okay, we've tried and it's not working. Yeah. They're, they're, that's not acceptable here. You know, we've got leaders in the community who are, okay, we've tried this and it hasn't worked so much yet. We're going to keep pushing mm -hmm. until we find the thing that does work, until mm -hmm. we're able to make those bridges and connections and until the workforce really represents what the you know community looks like yeah. all across the region. So, you know, I feel really confident in 
community leaders and, and all of the various players who, from the government and private, and you know, there's a lot of partnerships in place and oh, yeah. fantastic things happening. So before we get to the end of this conversation, okay. this has been great. Uh, I love where we've headed with this today. And you know, for people listening, this podcast doesn't really have a script. We don't, you know, start out with bullet points of, okay, we're going to talk about this, this. It's yeah. really just kind of a natural conversation. Yeah, it's been good. And, uh, you know, I like to keep it that way. And so th to me, this has been a fantastic conversation so far. But I want to hear mm -hmm. about what are some of the programs. I know you mentioned the Small Business Awards yes. from the Chamber. What mm -hmm. are some of the other programs um, people are going to be seeing from the chamber, the incubator, you also mentioned the 2040, Velocity 2040. Yes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I know there's a lot of stuff going on right now, and I, I'd just like to hear a little for the listeners about uh, what they can expect out of those things. Yeah, so Velocity 2040 was um, actually several weeks of doing research and um, surveys, steering committees. You just had a press release um, uh, the first week of February, a big um, press conference talking about the results of that. Um, and it's basically figuring out where uh, Chattanooga can be headed in the next 20 years mm -hmm. on the economic and development side. Um, I believe you can look up uh, the data on velocity2040.com. So you can see a lot of those, um, a lot of the metrics, a lot of data that has surfaced through that. So that was a pretty exciting, exciting time. Yeah, that's I think, um, Speaking of uh, diversity, the, the, the folks who were in the room um, in a lot of those steering committees and a lot of those uh, sessions were from, I mean, diverse in age, heritage. I mean, just, mm -hmm. it was really a beautiful display. I wish that Chattanooga showed up that way in all things. Yeah. Um, and maybe we'll get there. Maybe that was the start of, you know, uh, the landscape changing. Mm -hmm. So the Small Business Awards is happening on March 20th. Um, so we get to recognize a lot of the folks who are the execution, <laughs> the ones who execute on their ideas. Yeah. Uh, yep. So they're executing well. We have a couple of them that are out of the incubator. Blaze Creative, as I mentioned. Um, Office Furniture Warehouse is an incubator alum. Um, and a few others that, that you may recognize, Bitter Alibi, mm -hmm. um, Shaw Trucking. Um, so uh, we're, I'm pretty excited. That's one of my favorite. Yeah. Uh, yeah, one of my favorite events, especially when I when I'm around someone like Gabby, who I remember started with just a few projects, and then it was a huge step for her to get her own office. Yeah. And now she's two years in, and being nominated for an award for her hard work is pretty cool. Yeah, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the I've always enjoyed the Small Business Awards because, you know, you've got the expo that happens as a part of it. You mm -hmm. get to, you know, it's great networking time. Oh, yeah. You pretty much know who's going to be there. There's usually a couple of new companies every year yeah. that, you know, maybe they're graduates of the incubator program. But mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, you get to visit friends and, you know. Oh, yeah just make all make the rounds through the expo and you know shake hands and make all those connections it's always a fantastic event but i'm always amazed too at the quality of you know companies that are highlighted as part part of the small business awards infosystems has been a part of that several times okay, uh, yeah. at least two or three times throughout our history and uh i think the last was maybe 2012 or 2013 okay um yeah. but every, i pay attention to that every year because you really do get to see some great companies mm -hmm. that, you know, and if there's one complaint I have about Chattanooga, and, you know, I'm sorry for my friends in the media, but <laughs> you, you don't really get to hear a lot of the stories yeah. about local businesses. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, so to me, the, the Small Business Awards is a chance to, you know, hear some great stories about local businesses and entrepreneurs and companies that have been here for 120 years. And, Definitely. You know, you get to hear what's going on and what's new. And, yeah. you know, I wish there were a better uh, publication or local media source that was really dedicated yeah. to telling business stories, not just so-and-so received $40 million in VC exactly. funding. Yeah, you know? exactly. Like last year, um, I think... Mermaid Mattress was one of the ones that 
they they hit some sort of benchmark, but I didn't know those were like they they make those mattresses right up the road. Yeah, I thought Mermaid Mattress was something like across the country, and we just have a few storefronts here. Mm -hmm. But they are, there's I mean they're family. Yep. You know, um, and so we we take for granted all these legacy companies that are here. I mean we have some really juicy. I mean. Chattanooga is right for entrepreneurs. Oh yeah, like, it's the right place. Yeah, and just to you know throw a, a plug about our company out there, this is our 25th anniversary this wow. year. Wow. And you know, so if you date a IT company, a mm -hmm. technology company, back 25, 25 years, 25 years, that means you're you essentially got started kind of at the beginning mm -hmm. of all of the business computer networking yep. stuff. Yeah. That was happening. You know, before that, it was really just the major companies who had rooms that they could dedicate to those huge behemoth compute yeah, systems exactly. and you know small businesses didn't have any of that it was like you know punching buttons on a cash register that was a mechanical <laughs> machine yes, yeah. not connected to anything we didn't even have the internet until what no. the early 90s so. and then what 25 years ago that's that was the year of the the clunky cell phones right yeah. in, the, in the pouch and or <laughs> the big flip phones i mean we've come a long way yep. Congratulations, Info System. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> 25 cool. years and still growing strong. Yeah. We, you know, we've grown every year. And what's really exciting, and you know, we're going to be telling this story through the media this year, is that we launched a new company three years ago. That's a cloud services company, mm -hmm. and we're launching another new company this year. That's another cloud services wow. company that offers uh, different types of technology, and you know, for a company like a regionally grounded company like Infosystems 25 years into existence to then be starting up new companies that have nationwide potential mm -hmm. you know that to me that's a really strong story it uh, is. especially you know when you take into consideration all of the technology based mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. business that that's come here now and, and growing out of here so Anyway, I think we're probably getting a little long-winded. Okay. I don't want to uh, uh, <laughs> it's okay. uh, uh, bore it's any of our stuff. listeners. Yeah, this, yeah. Is, this is a great conversation. But I would like to uh, encourage anyone who mm -hmm. has not visited the incubator or been engaged in any uh, events or anything that happened there to go to the incubator website, mm -hmm. which is... It's uh, chattanoogachamber.com uh, backslash incubator. Okay, so yeah. you're going to go to the main... Chattanooga mm -hmm. Chamber website, then there will be an incubator page that yep. tells about all of the programs and services. And if you pay attention to the events on the Chattanooga Chamber website, mm -hmm. a lot there are a lot of business networking and local events that are hosted in your all's main media room down yeah. there on the first uh -huh. floor. In the training room, yeah, yep. definitely. And so, you know, to me, that's a great way for people to uh, take a little bit out of their day go see what that facilities look like you can take a tour yes yeah, so uh, you can take a tour you can rent our facilities yeah. um we have beautiful spaces the training room we have one on the third floor that we're renting out now so yeah that's great yeah. and so you know for anyone who hasn't uh taken initiative to do that you've got to go check it out and it sounds like there's going to be even more great things yeah. happening at the incubator now that uh, you've been in your role for a little over a year yeah, January 8th was a year. So uh, I'm, the pressure's on now. You get a pass your first year, right? <laughs> yeah. So now yeah, the pressure's it. on. Alexis is really going to be doing some things. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, was, there's a lot of eyes on me right now. Uh, so, yes, definitely. Well, thank you so much for coming out today and uh, having a conversation, Alexis. And yeah, uh, I look for forward to keeping up with your career and everything that goes on at the chamber and the incubator. And so uh, we'll leave it there. Okay, cool. Thanks. Thanks.